the Irish guy and right. Premier League game week 16 predictions. Again, lads, the stakes are high. I am on a streak of getting one correct 100% prediction every single week. Again, lads, if I don't get at least one scoreline completely correct this weekend, then I will get 50 yogurt pots and pour them all over my head. Right, let's go. Crystal Palace nil, Liverpool 3. Lads, Selhurst Park is supposed to represent a stadium of other trauma for Liverpool after Crystal Bull in 2014. The theory is that after absolutely ruining their title challenge here nine years ago, the Liverpool fans should be like petrified penguins piling into the stadium. Blokes who go to bed every night, not scared of the boogeyman beneath the bed. Oh no, but it's about Dwight Gale in the cupboard. But no, Liverpool clearly aren't affected by Palace anymore. I think that was proved when they turned up to the ground and won 7-0. That devastating 3-3 draw in 2014. That was purely Brendan Rodgers naively trying to hunt down Man City's goal advantage in that game. He was literally trying to pump Palace by six or seven goals that night and they actually did exactly that in 2020. Listen, we've got a hungry Resurge at Liverpool, hunting down the Premier League title versus a sleepy Palace team who are being babysat by a man who probably, at several points during the day, forgets his own name. Apparently, Palace are actually looking to sack Roy Hodgson. Someone, yes, most likely needs help to wipe his bum. With Palace supposedly targeting either Steve Cooper or Kieran McKenna. Two men at completely contrasting levels of the form bucket. Cooper is more demoralized than Kirk Van Outen. And that's not just because he's asked some random women in the street if they'd rather kill a bunny rabbit than give him a kiss. No, it's because Forrest have lost four games in a row. While McKenna has newly promoted Ipswich soaring back into the Premier League. This was supposed to be a campaign of surviving in the championship. Not winning 14 of their 19 league games. So honestly, if Palace really are interviewing both these guys in a month, one is going to be an extremely confident, happy man. The other will be too ashamed to even look Steve Parrish in the eye and will most likely burn burst into tears during his PowerPoint presentation. Ozzy, if you're in a relegation scrap, hiring a manager who's just being sacked by another team in the scrap, it's weird. It's like earlier this year when Southampton tried to get Jesse Marsh just weeks after Leeds gave him the boot. Look, what I'm trying to say is that Palace are in a complete mess right now. Nobody has faith in Hodgson anymore. He probably struggles writing his Christmas cards. He needs someone to tell him who his grandkids are. I'm going to go with the comprehensive 3-0 Reds win where they won't even have to get out of second gear. Two goals from Cody Gakpo, one from Alexis McAllister, Done. Brighton 3, Burnley 1. Look, this will be an attractive match to watch. Both Brighton and Burnley play pretty stuff. It's just the Seagulls actually have good players to achieve these results. Roberto De Zerbi is exactly what Vincent Company is trying to be. I mean, as a manager, I mean, as players, Company would have picked up this Italian Frodo Baggins and, and peeled them like an orange if they ever played each other. But yeah, I am sorry, Burnley. They are agonizingly close to actually escaping the relegation zone. They are just one win away, which seems pretty mental considering how mostly hopeless they've been. I think it'll be a good match. Both teams will attack, but Brighton are just better. I'm sorry, but if Burnley do win this game, I'll get a stranger to throw 20 eggs at me in the street. Man United 2, Bournemouth 2. I know. I know many of you are looking at this prediction and are just like, uh, what? Are you talking nonsense? Have you shoved a Christmas tree up your nose to the point where it's tickling your brain? No. 2-2. Two, two. Actual 2-2. Two, two. Bournemouth have only ever had one positive result at this ground ever in their history. A 1-1 one, one draw in March 2017. That was it. A game that was so long ago, Arthur Borch actually saved a penalty from Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah, those men now have a combined age of 84. It was actually a managerial battle between Josie Mourinho and Eddie Howe, which really is a fascinating matchup. But listen, I think Andoni Iriola is nicking a point off Eric Ten Hag. Why not? Bournemouth are absolutely cooking right now. They have collected 13 points from the last available 18, beating Burnley, Newcastle, Sheffield United, Crystal Palace, and we're seconds away from a win over high-flying Aston Villa. How they are still technically 15th, I have no earthly clue. Because right now, they're playing like a team hunting down European football. I know Man United got a positive win over Chelsea, but I'm sorry, I'm going with a 2-2 draw. Goals from Scott McTominay and Bruno Fernandes will have Man United tune it up at halftime, but the Cherries will come out, be brave, get on the ball, attack, and make two late goals from Dominic Solanke and Antoine a menu. Cue the booze. I know Bournemouth will be good here. And to prove it, if Man United win this game by more than one goal, then I will dunk a liter of orange juice over my head. Come on, Bournemouth. Do me proud. Sheffield United won Brentford 2. Look, Brentford have a hideous injury crisis. While Sheffield United have a new manager bounce with Chris Wilder at the wheel. Surely this all points to a Blades win, right? With Bramble Lane absolutely bouncing to get this modern legend back in their stadium. Now, the bubble and hype around Wilder has sort of burst ever since Tyson Fury sent him to sleep in the ring. But also, for Sheffield United manager Chris, he was hot property three or four years ago. Back in 2019, he was officially the most successful manager in England. He had won 127 league games in 2014. No manager in any English league had won more games of football in a five-year stretch. But I mean, it settled down. Yeah, Mauricio Pochettino was third on that list, but number two, 
Was Wiggins Paul Cook? Yeah, he, he currently coaches Chesterfield in the conference, where he probably gets paid in wine gums and a kiss on the cheek. But still, when Wilder was on his way to guiding the blaze in ninth in the Premier League, some Arsenal fans wanted him to replace Unai Emery at the wheel, wanting Emery out and Wilder in. It is a notion that does not compute. For example, if the Aston Villa chairman binned off this Spanish wizard in the morning in favour of bringing in Chris, you had a fans literally threatening to burn down his house, and yet some Arsenal supporters wanted Emery out for Wilder. Ask any Villa fan if they'd like that. Now, now, it would be a bit like if you just offered to pour them a glass of toilet water. Peter Crouch was literally tipping him for the gunner's job. Wolves manager Nuno Espirito Santo is favored to replace Emery, but what about Chris Wilder? People will turn their noses up at that suggestion, and I expect Arsenal will think they are better than appointing a manager from Sheffield United. They should think again, because Arsenal are behind them in the table. Crouchy, I can promise you, giving Wilder the Arsenal job, sticking him in that dugout just a year after Arsene Wenger was there, it would be a bit like making Nicki Minaj the next queen. Ah, uh, no thanks. Wilder would be more out of his depth than a monkey trying to swim. Anyway, yeah, I'm tipping Brentford to win. 2-1. Wolves 2, Nottingham Forest 0. Steve Cooper is about to be sacked. Reports have come out that if Nottingham Forest lose at Molyneux, then this bloke will be given his P45, with such crushing news like that leaked to the media. I mean, he's literally being thrown to the Wolves, because if he loses this weekend, he is out. That's rough. This is going to be an emotional afternoon for him. He desperately needs a win. But I am sorry, this is going to be their fifth loss in a row. We just saw Wolves grind out a home win over struggling Burnley. It's going to be the same. 2-0. Yi Chang Huang and Mateus Kuna with the goals. Take one hard look at Cooper, everyone. You won't be seeing him for a while. Aston Villa 3, Arsenal 2. Lads. This is going to be such a fascinating match. What this reminds me of is February 2016, when Leicester City beat Man City at the Etihad. That was the turning point. Suddenly, everybody thought, oh, maybe the Foxes are serious about winning the league. Maybe it's too early to say a similar thing about Villa. Uh, now, maybe this is more like when Leicester beat the title holders Chelsea before Christmas. Lads, if Villa beat the Gunners on Saturday afternoon and Palace do them a favour in the morning, they could, could be one point off first. Um... Considering they began the season by losing 5-1 at Newcastle, that is absolutely amazing. What better way for Emery to inflict utter revenge on the club who sacked him than to beat them and move within one point of the bloke who nicked his job? Aston Villa fans must be so excited about this match. While Arsenal fans must be incredibly nervous, Villa just beat the best team in the world on home soil. They will feel they can take on anyone. And I reckon this is going to be a mental match. A bit like the game against Luton. This will go back and forth, loads of goals. Leon Bailey, Gabriel Martinelli, Matty Cash, Gabriel Jesus on the score sheet. Before finally, Ollie Watkins with the winner. What a match this is going to be. Tottenham nil, Newcastle 1. Tottenham are having a meltdown. Lads, if Dejan Kulisevsky had not scored that miracle equaliser at the Eddie had, then Ange Postacoglu would have lost five Premier League games in a row. That's almost sack-worthy. People were talking about them as title outsiders a month ago. But I mean, they're coping without Madison. About as well as a type 2 diabetic. Get a... Medicine, uh, sounds like Madison in an Australian accent. Ah, forget it. I know Newcastle just got beat up at Everton, uh, which was never a 3-0 match, by the way. But Spurs without JM are mostly garbage. Lads, half these Tottenham players will still have scars about being 5-0 down after 20 minutes against, Newca against Eddie House boys back in April. Even Steve Bruce once picked up a shock win at this spaceship of a ground. Just weeks after Tottenham were in the Champions League final. Weirdly, um, Joe Linton scored the winner back in the days when he was a porridge oaf of a centre forward. What's even more weirder is that I predicted he would do it. Anyone riding off Joe Linton after two games is mental. Look at Wesley tonight. He will score this weekend. How on earth did I get that one right? Back when the Brazilian had all the brittle self-confidence of a depressed giraffe. So you know what? I'm going for a repeat of 2019. 1-0, Joe Linton with the winner. Imagine if lightning strikes twice. Imagine if this actually happens. 1-0, Joe Linton with the goal. If that happens, then I think I might actually challenge McGregor to run for president. Everton won, Chelsea won. Well, Chelsea might as well ride off this season. This is clearly just another traditional year where everyone just gives the manager a pass, I guess. I mean, lads, I know they won a Champions League in the middle of it, but it really does seem that Chelsea have been in transition ever since Antonio Conte won them the league. Yeah, that was nearly seven years ago. The club have been a work in progress, not the finished article, ever since they had Victor Moses at right back. And yeah, Goodison Park will be a tough place for them to go. I'm pretty sure I am safe from milk for the rest of the season. Lads, if it weren't for the points deduction, Everton would be 10th. Sean Dyche is producing a masterclass. And yeah, there's another gritty determined toffee's display. I'll go with the 1-1 draw. Goals from Abdullah to Kure and a late, late Cole Palmer penalty. Luton nil Man City 6. Look, I'm sorry, little Luton, but you are facing an angry Man City. They are the best team in world football and yet haven't won a Premier League game in well over a month. That is embarrassing. For some of the best paid athletes on the planet to then be winless in four games, it's not good enough. So traveling to Luton's tiny ground, playing against footballers who earn about 100 of 
what City Superstars are on. I'm sorry, but no. I really do think that that soul crushing last minute 4 3 defeat at home to Arsenal would have knocked the absolute stuffing out of Luton. They'll still be devastated. It'll be such an energy sapping match on their soul. Even their players will probably feel stiff. The likes of Ross Barkley, who's probably been struggling to get off the couch when fetching the frozen sausage rolls from his fridge. Sorry, but City are going to turn it on. I'm going to go with a record for this season in terms of possession. I'm going to go with 85% of the ball for City. Erling Haddle will take out his hatred on referees with a hat-trick. Jeremy Doku, Bernardo Silva, and Rico Lewis with the other goals. Sorry, but six. Yes, six nil. If Man City score five or more, then you all need to write in the comments on my reactions video. Irish guy is the best human being in the world. Take that, Nelson Mandela. Fulham 2, West Ham 1. This will be a nothing match. I know West Ham got a great win at Spurs, but Fulham have their confidence back after absolutely hammering. Nothing a farce by five, so yeah. 2-1 Fulham win. Winning with the winner. And I mean, that's even what let me do. Oh. Did I get a white one? Predict. It does the streak continue. Did I get another one right? Let me know in the comments if I did. Let me know if I didn't. What's your predictions? Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like to your comments. As always, I'll talk to you in a while.